Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today, I am going to be sharing with you my multiple myeloma story. So this is the story about how I was diagnosed and all about my symptoms and how I even started and kind of knew something was wrong. So I'm just gonna share with you all of that because my story is not typical. Okay. The only way I knew something was wrong was when I started having physical issues, meaning my joints were super sore and I was just in a lot of pain. By the end of it, by diagnosis, I was just in so much pain. So I'll share a little bit about that. March is Multiple Myeloma Awareness Month. So now is the time to share. It's the perfect time and I am so glad to be able to do so. I feel like if I can help one person, then it's so worth it. And that was my prayer. At the very beginning of all of this, when I was diagnosed, I remember praying, if I could help one person, then my journey would be worth it, you know? And that is truly what I intend to do. I just want to be someone out there that can shed some light on this disease because this used to be an old man's disease and it is no longer an old person's disease. Multiple myeloma basically is a cancer of the plasma cells where you begin to make so many cells and it crowds out your healthy plasma cells. And so then that creates all the issues, your kidney issues, the high calcium, uh, it begins to eat at your bones, it breaks your bones. Uh, that is kind of how it starts out. So basically your cells start kind of attacking your body, I guess, so to speak. And you, all of the cells that create your ability to have immunities from getting sick and from having infections, they're crowded out. So then you begin having sickness and infections. Again, I did not have those symptoms. So I'll share with you what I had. I feel like I need to share my story. Um, and so that's what I'm doing here. So, Thank you for joining me on my channel. And if you are going to watch this, I certainly appreciate it. I have prayed and my one prayer from the beginning is that, you know, I can give glory to God. Even in something as horrible as this, I wanna give God glory. And I want to thank him for the good that has come out of the bad. Because ultimately good wins over bad and over evil. And to sit here and just say my whole life is just now destroyed and woe is me would be saying that God is defeated and he is not defeated, okay? So I am going to give him every piece of glory. I am going to praise him because he has shown goodness through this whole thing and he has just given me blessings that I would never have had had I not walked through a little bit of this hardship. So that being said, back in May of 2016, I decided that I was going to get healthy. I was going to start working out, I was going to lose weight, and I was going to get in the best shape of my life. And I did. I started working out, I started weight training, and I would say by September and October, uh, I was definitely fit. And I started weight training, and then I can remember after I would work out, I would be so sore. I would be in so much pain. And 48 hours later, when it's time to do the workout again, I was still in a lot of pain. And I just remember thinking, well, I guess this is 40 because I was, I had just turned 39 and I thought, well, I'll be 40 in a year. So I guess this is just how my life's gonna be now. You know, I'm just gonna be in a lot of pain after I work out and it's just never gonna go away. Come January, like mid-January, early February, I started having some problems off, even more than just the working out. My joints, my joints started to hurt so bad to the point where I would get up in the morning and I wouldn't even be able to like squeeze my hands. I had a lot of tightness around my wrists. My, my knees hurt so bad. Like I literally would get out of bed and I felt like I was 80 years old. And so... I talked to my family about it and I can remember, you know, them saying, well, you really just need to go to the doctor. So I had a very close friend whose husband works in uh, like physical therapy. So he actually had a friend meet with me and I thought I had a workout injury. 
Okay, so in my mind, I had a workout injury. I thought that I had really hurt my wrist doing some of my weight training. Because yes, my knees and my feet were hurting, but at this point, it was my wrist that were really, really giving me trouble. And so I thought that somehow I had hurt them doing some of my weight training. And I met with this physical therapist, and after he looked me over, he was like, you don't have a workout injury because you have pain in like both of your wrists. If it was an injury, you know, you'd really only have it on one side. I really think you should get to a doctor because there's just something, you know, something you have going on internally. So at that point, I made an appointment with my general doctor. I had all the, you know, basic tests done. I remember the nurse calling a couple of weeks after that saying, well, we're gonna have to have you do more tests because you have what we call a high sed rate, which is where you have a lot of inflammation in your body. So you're gonna need to go and we're gonna need to like figure out what's going on and why you have such high uh, inflammation. And I remember thinking, no duh, no duh I have inflammation. Like I am hurting so bad. So I immediately looked up, uh, high sed rate on my phone. And the very first thing I see was multiple myeloma. And I remember freaking out because that was a blood cancer. And I was just like, what? Myeloma is a cancer that affects like old men. But at that point, I mean, not then, but now I know that was God, you know, placing that on my heart. It was like a seed that was planted. And I never forgot it. It was like always in the back of my mind. So I, again, just took more tests. And in the meantime, the general doctor sent me to the rheumatoid arthritis doctor because I had convinced myself that I had arthritis because my symptoms were actually really, really classic arthritis symptoms, you know. Diagnosed myself, no doubt, I have arthritis. And basically he's just like, I'm gonna to have to do more tests because I cannot sit here and tell you you have rheumatoid arthritis because yes, you have joint issues, but I don't know, I just feel like there's something more going on and I think we're just gonna to need to do more tests. you know. And he did give me the option of steroids, but he said, you know, if I give you steroids, then it could mask something worse. And so I'm so thankful I never took the steroids, but I have gone, I went to the doctor so many times, you guys, and every time I would leave, I would just be in like tears because I was in so much pain and I had to wait and I had to keep doing tests. In the meantime of being at the RA doctor, my general doctor calls me on a Friday afternoon and tells me he got back some tests that I had took previously with him and that I had what they considered a M protein showing up in my blood a monoclonal protein. And I said, well, what does that mean? You know, what, what, what? And he's like, well, it's indicative of someone who has multiple myeloma. But he was like, but you don't have myeloma, okay? There's no way, you're too young. You don't have any of the symptoms. Um, there's just so many other things that, you know, my myeloma, shows up as there's just no way that you have that you're so young you're so healthy so we're just gonna have to figure out what's going on and he was like i think that the arthritis must be you know kind of putting out like these weird proteins in your blood so we're just gonna get to the bottom of it but don't worry you don't have myeloma again in the back of my mind i remember thinking what is going on myeloma this is the second time now i've like heard this word, seen this word. And again, you know, now that I know what I know, I know God was again placing that on my heart, kind of preparing me for the news that I would eventually hear. So at that point, I remember going back to the doctor and after he did a few more tests, he said, well, you're gonna need to go to see a hematologist. So I did go to a hematologist. Well, I called my doctor, who is now my cancer doctor, and she's the doctor that I see, because he had just kind of come to, he had just exhausted all of his knowledge on it. You know, he thought, he looked at all my blood work, and he says, you know, I really think something is going on, something's wrong, but I just, I can't read this blood work the way it needs to be read. So you're gonna need to see her, she's a hematologist, and 
I said, okay, that's fine, you know. So I, I got in to see her and after a few appointments, a few of her saying, you know, oh, you're gonna be okay, to, okay, now we have a problem, you're going to need to have a biopsy. That's the only way we're gonna know definitively because my blood work was just so confusing and, and it just didn't show exactly what they needed to see. So I had a bone marrow biopsy done and then I found out a week later that I had myeloma. And obviously I was absolutely shocked and you know, sad, angry, confused. It was just really awful. I mean, it was awful. And my mom was with me. She came with me whenever I was, you know, when came and saw the doctor. And I just remember, you know, she cried. And it's just really hard to see people that you love in pain, you know? And I was just literally like, this can't be real. This is, I'm in such shock. And the very first thing I asked her was like, okay, what's the prognosis? And she immediately said, I never ever give people dates about like you can live this long or this is what's expected she said because every person is different and you are young you are healthy there is no reason that you cannot you know treat it and beat it and have a stem cell transplant and just you know be in remission for the rest of your life I mean, this is kind of how she came at me so that was like the first thing out of her mouth basically was like you're going you are going to treat this and then you are going to go to Mayo Clinic and you're going to have a transplant because the best way to get this completely into a deep remission is to you know get your get the treatment down into remission and then you have your stem cell transplant so again that is a whole nother subject that I will broach with you guys um, I'm gonna leave it here and if you guys, like I said, have any questions, please let me know down below, but it's been a wild ride, okay? It's a wild ride. I don't think I'm ever gonna get off the ride. The ride might go a little slow at times and it might be a little less bumpy, but it's always gonna be a ride, but such is life. So if you got this far, thank you. Okay, when I got diagnosed, I was, my blood was 85% infiltrated with myeloma which is insane terrible so when I think about it that way I just and then the fact that I still hadn't I didn't have any kidney issues I mean that was God right there the fact that I was so sick with myeloma but yet I my bones you know were still in pretty good shape and my um, my organs my liver, my kidneys, none of that had been affected. So I'm just so blessed because of that. You know, I really, again, I just thank God every second for the blessings that there are because there are so many blessings in the hardship that I've gone through. So anyways, thank you so much for joining me today. I will be doing a part two on my treatment. And then, like I said, a part three on transplant and beyond. So Look out for those if you're interested, but I'll link a couple of videos below about my Loma because great videos with lots of knowledge on what to look for and just explanation of my Loma. So thanks for joining me, you guys, and I will talk to you all soon. Bye.